Hello everyone, it's Snowy here and welcome to this ghetto tutorial where I will explain you how to make a shockwave shader that looks like this. There are hundreds of examples and tutorials that you can find on the web, but I think they are not very beginner friendly and lack visual explanations. The goal of this tutorial is to give you an insight so you can later create your very own shaders. Of course, you could just go on Shader Toy and grab some Shockwave shader and slap it into Godot, but that's not the goal here. So, without further ado, let's get right into it. Today, we will use a fragment shader, which is basically code that runs for every pixel in a given area and returns a new color for each of those pixels. To do anything remotely interesting, we need to know where's the current pixel. That information is given by the UV coordinates, or in short, UV. The UV is a vector whose X and Y coordinates range from 0 to 1, no matter the dimensions or resolution of the screen. For example, the UV of the center pixel is 0 0.5, 0 0.5. It has also a cool visual representation, where we set the red and green channels of the pixels to the UV. When we are at 0, 1, the color is green. When we are at 1, 0, the color is red. And at the top right, at 1, 1, it's yellow, because green plus red is yellow. The UV can be used to draw almost any kind of shape and sample a texture according to the coordinates. It's kind of like every pixel is saying, hey, I'm here, I want the corresponding fragment from the texture. But nothing restrains the fragment to be at some position, but request to sample a different one. This way you can offset the texture or distort it. So in Ghetto, you select the canvas item you want to apply the shader to and under material, you create a new shader material. And here you create a new shader. In the shader, we need to tell Ghetto what type of shader this is. So we type shader type and this is a canvas item, so canvas item and semicolon at the end to tell the compiler this is the end of the expression. Next, we want to create the fragment function, so that will be the code that will be executed for every pixel in the canvas item. So void, fragment, parentheses, and finally curly brackets. For the sake of having a visual representation, let's set the color to the UV, or respectively the red and green channels to the UV. So we type color equals vector for the first two channels, red and green, will be set to the UV, the blue channel will be equal to zero, and the alpha will be one, so it's fully opaque. And as you can see, it looks the same as on the animation, with the exception that here the y-axis is flipped. So as I showed you, you can use the UV to map a texture to the canvas item. So let's comment this line out with two slashes. So again, color equals texture. So this is a function that loads a sampler 2D or a texture and it returns a color. We want to use the current texture of the canvas item. So we write in all caps texture and we want to map it according to the UV. And as you can see, it just displays the original texture without any modification. Now let's say I want to offset it. What we can do is to pass a different coordinate to the texture function. So what we can do is, for example, UV minus VEC2, 0 0.5 and 0. And as you can see, it offsets the texture by a half to the right. Okay, let's comment that out and uncomment the line we have above to get back to this colorful UV representation. Now, let's create the distortion for the shockwave. We want to displace the pixels away from a point. On a vector field, it would look something like this. First of all, we need to define a new uniform variable for the center point. We declare it here at the top, uniform back to center. And as you can see, it shows up in the inspector. 
In the fragment function, we define a new vec2 that we call disp, and we set it to the uv minus the center. This gives us the vector going from the center to the current uv coordinate. Then we normalize the whole thing, so we only keep the direction. Now we can use this to displace the uv. On the line below, we change the uv to uv minus disp. Currently, the center point is here, but we want it to be in the center of the image. So, in the inspector, we set it to 0 0.5, 0 0.5. And as you can see, the UV now appears distorted away from the center. We will now declare a new uniform, that is a float, and we will call it force. This will be used to modulate the strength of the distortion. Here, we can multiply the displacement vector by the force. Currently, the force is equal to zero, so there is no distortion whatsoever. But as soon as we modify this value, you can see how it affects the UV. Now, let's uncomment the line that samples the texture and replace the offset vector by the disp vector you can see that now the image is distorted. You can change the center of the distortion as well as modulate its force. Okay, so now we want to save the shader so we can use it elsewhere. Under Material, right-click the shader and hit Save. I will save it as shockwave.shader. Here I have a simple 2D scene with some sprites in it, and I have a canvas layer in it. Now I want to add a color rectangle in the canvas layer, and I will use the layout option to make it full screen. In the color rectangle we go under the canvas item section, and under material we create a new shader material, and here we load the shader we previously saved. We want to apply the distortion to the screen, so instead of texture and UV, we will use screen texture and screen UV. In the editor, this takes the current 2D view, so it may look a bit weird when we start playing with the parameters. But in game it will look fine because the color rectangle will cover the entire screen. By the way, we can now remove this line because this was used only to show the UV as a demonstration for the tutorial. What bothers me right now is that the distortion is stretch and not circular. That is because the width and height are not the same. We can fix that by dividing or multiplying one of the UV coordinates by the aspect ratio. Let me demonstrate by a simple animation. First of all, we get our aspect ratio. Here, it is 2. Then we want to scale the x-axis of the UV according to that ratio, but we want to scale it from the middle. In order to do that, we first offset the x-axis, then we can scale it, here we divide it by 2, and next we can offset it back. So back in the shader, we want to calculate the ratio in the fragment function. So we create a new float that we call ratio and we set it to screen pixel size dot x divided by screen pixel size dot y. Next we define a new vec2 that we call scaled uv for our scaled uv and we set it to screen uv minus vec2 0 0.50 so we offset it. Then we divide the whole thing by the ratio, but only on the x-axis. So we do vec2 ratio and one on the y-axis. Then finally, we offset it back. So we add a vec2, 0 0.5 and 0. Now here in the displacement, we change screen UV by the scaled UV. And as you can see, now the distortion is circular and looking kind of nice. 
So now we want to limit the distortion to a donut shape. In order to do that, we need to calculate a mask circle whose values will range from 0 to 1 and appear black and white. To do that, we will use the length of the UV vector. And we want the circle to be drawn from our center point. So when we are at our center coordinate, we want to remap it to 0. Here I want the center point of the circle to be at 0 0.5, 0 0.5. So I need to remap that to be 0. So I just subtract 0 0.5, 0 0.5. Okay, so in the fragment function under the scaled UV, declare a new float that we call mask and we set it to the length of the scaled UV minus the center. Now let's display how it looks. Here at the end, we set the color RGB channels to our mask, so we need to pass it as a VEC free. So as you can see, we have a circular gradient that goes from black to white. Basically, it displays the length that goes from zero to infinity. But here, we want to have a solid border. So here, we want every value under a certain edge to be black and over that value, we want it to be white. To do that, we will use the step function where we define our edge value, for example, 0 0.3. And as you can see, now it clamps the values and we have a circle with a harsh border. To control the radius of this circle, we can define a new uniform that will be a float and let's call it size. Instead of the arbitrary value here, we replace it by size. And now we can control the size of the circle from the inspector. I don't like those harsh borders. So instead of the step function, we can use the smooth step function that takes two edges. So it will interpolate between black and white. So we define our first edge and the second that we offset by some small value. So that will be our feather. And as you can see, we now have a feathered circle. I like the end of the feather to be the actual size. So we just need to do the opposite for the edges. Here we go. But we want this to be a white circle on a black background. So let's invert the value. So we just add one minus the whole smooth step and now it's inverted. Now instead of displaying this we can comment it out and apply the mask to the displacement. So we just multiply the thing by the mask and now as you can see the distortion is only applied in the circle area. Let's uncomment the line. Now to finish the donut shape we want another circle that is black inside the white one. Okay, let's put this first expression between parentheses so we can multiply it by the other smaller circle. So we take the smooth step and we put it here and we want it to be smaller. So we change the edges and we have the donut shape we wanted. Now, if we comment out this line, you can see that the distortion is only applied in this donut area. Okay, let's uncomment that and add another uniform that will be a float and let's call it thickness. Here in the second smooth step, that is our black circle, we modify the outer edge to be size minus thickness and the inner edge to size minus thickness minus 0 0.1. And now from the inspector we can change the thickness. Finally let's comment that out again 
And now we can also change the thickness of the distortion. So this is it, we have made a shockwave using shaders and now we can use an animation player to animate the shockwave. One last thing, maybe you have noticed in the example I showed you at the beginning, there is some chromatic aberration in the shockwave. So that is your homework, try to do it yourself. If you have no idea or you really get stuck, ask me down in the comments and I will try to reply as fast as I can. Anyways, if you enjoyed the tutorial and you want to see more things like this, consider subscribing and without further ado, see you next time.